Hi, I'm Vanessa with OC Habitats, and today we're going to learn about the coastal sage scrub and chaparral habitats. These two habitats cover a large portion of Orange County, California, and they do share a lot of uh, similarities, but do have some key differences, which we will cover today. Coastal sage scrub, known as the soft chaparral, is a subregion of the chaparral habitat. They therefore share many similarities and have a good deal of overlap with the types of plants and animals that are found within them. The chaparral habitat is California's most extensive native plant community. Chaparral covers about 20% of Orange County's area. Overall, both habitats are relatively hot and dry with low precipitation levels of about 10 to 17 inches per year. Droughts are therefore common, especially in the summer. Temperatures can fluctuate drastically as well, with days being hot while nights can become fairly cold. The climate of the region means that many of the plants found here need to have adaptations to reduce water loss. A common adaptation of many of these plants is to go dormant during the summer and fall. When this happens, plants may look like they are dead, but they are actually just conserving water and will come back in the cooler season. The two ecoregions are extremely biodiverse, with 291 bird species and 74 mammal species being found here. They are also an extremely important region for pollinator species like butterflies. Over 200 butterfly species are found here. Coastal sage scrub and chaparral are separated primarily by their elevation levels. Coastal sage scrub is found at lower elevations from sea level to 1,800 feet. Chaparral is found in higher elevations from about 1,800 feet up to 6,500 feet in some places. Coastal sage scrub is restricted to these lower elevations because the higher elevations are too cold and the plants found in this habitat cannot survive the frost present there. One key way to differentiate coastal sage scrub and chaparral is that the coastal sage scrub has more delicate and aromatic plants, which is why it is often referred to as the soft chaparral. The chaparral conversely has more woody plants that can scratch and rip your clothes. Coastal sage scrub plants are usually lighter in color with very small leaves, which helps them reduce water loss. True chaparral plants have leaves that are waxy and hard. Both of these habitats provide very strong examples of slope effect, which is caused by the geographic aspect or the compass direction of surface faces of hills. On the south facing slopes, drought conditions are more intense and thus plants must be better adapted to these conditions. These plants will be drought deciduous dropping their leaves in the summer, or succulent, which allows them to store water. The plants on the south-facing slopes will look much lighter than the north-facing slopes, which receive less direct sunlight. North-facing slopes are covered with more evergreen plants that are larger overall, with larger leaves as well. This is one of the factors that creates stark contrast between areas on the hillsides of the coastal sage scrub and chaparral habitats. Here you can see an example of the slope effect. On the left, woodier chaparral plants dominate due to higher soil moisture content. On the right, coastal sage scrub plants like the California sagebrush dominate. Now let's test what you learned about the coastal sage scrub and chaparral. What are the main differences between the coastal sage scrub and chaparral? Is it A, different levels of precipitation and temperature, B, the coastal sage scrub has softer and aromatic stems while the chaparral has woodier stems on their plants, or C, the coastal sage scrub has fresh water, while the chaparral has salt water. If you answered B, you are correct. The coastal sage scrub is dominated by softer and aromatic plants, while the chaparral consists of woody plants that can scratch and rip your clothes. Toyon is a large, rounded shrub that is found throughout the coastal sage scrub and chaparral habitats. It is an evergreen shrub with thick, waxy leaves. In the summer, Toyon will have clusters of small white flowers. Toyon also bears fruit that looks like small red berries. The plant's flowers are visited by many pollinator species and the distinct red berries are an important food source for birds and mammals, including coyotes. In the 1920s, Toyon populations were threatened due to extensive harvest for Christmas decor. This caused the state to pass a law prohibiting the removal of any part of the plant from public land. This is an example of why it is important not to take items from our local natural ecosystems. The California sagebrush is a dominant species and namesake of the coastal sage scrub habitat. While its common name does include the word sage, it is not a true sage and is actually a part of the Asteraceae family. 
It is a very aromatic shrub with small light green leaves. The plant's leaves have many adaptations for the sunny, dry climate. Their light color reflects much of the sunlight, while their small size helps reduce the risk of embolism, which would halt water transport through the plant. Its quick growth and high drought tolerance makes it one of the foundational plants of the coastal sage scrub community. It is also a preferred plant of the endangered bird species, the California gnatcatcher. California buckwheat is a common shrub found in both the coastal sage scrub and chaparral. The leaves of the buckwheat grow in clusters and are leathery on top and woolly on the underside. Very small white to pink flowers form in clusters and eventually dry to a rust color. The dry flowers and leaves that drop create a natural mulch. The California buckwheat is an extremely attractive plant for pollinators, especially honeybees. During the dry months, it provides nectar to moths. The coast prickly pear is a cactus species that is usually found in large, dense clumps. Their branches are oval-shaped pads that display clusters of yellow spines. They bear fruit that is a purplish-red color and yellow flowers. The coast prickly pear is a host to the cochineal scale, which feed on the juice of the cactus. They appear as white bumps on the pads of the plant. When squished, the scales produce a crimson dye. These scales were harvested by the Aztec people for the production of dye, which became the second most profitable export from the Americas to Europe during the 15th century. The scrub oak is found in chaparral habitats. The term chaparral itself originated from the Spanish word chapara, which means scrub oak. It is an evergreen shrubby oak with dull green leaves. The top of the leaves are leathery while the undersides are hairy. The tree produces small brown egg-shaped acorns. The woolly undersides of its leaves help to reduce water loss and act as insulation against solar radiation and cold winds. The scrub oak also has an extensive root system that allows them to absorb as much water from the soil as possible. The scrub oak hosts a variety of butterflies and moths, including the western tiger swallowtail, California sister, and mournful dusky wing. There are so many plants in the coastal sage scrub and chaparral habitats, but let's focus on a few and test your knowledge. What are the coastal sage scrub and chaparral habitats named for? Is it A, evening primrose and toyon, B, coastal sagebrush and scrub oak, C, California poppy and western sycamore, or D, California buckwheat and coastal prickly pear? The answer is B. The coastal sage scrub is named for the California sagebrush, while the chaparral is named for the scrub oak. The California gnatcatcher is one of the endangered species that can be found in California's chaparral and coastal sage scrub habitats. The California gnatcatcher is a very small gray bird with a lighter gray underside and black tail. Males have a black cap, while females have a faint white eye ring and a slight brownish wash. These birds look very similar to other gnatcatchers and were originally thought to be a local form of the black-tailed gnatcatcher until the 1980s when it was classified as its own species. They forage for small insects in shrubs and low trees. They are year-long residents in the native scrublands and thus further development of these lands threatens their populations. Another threat to their population levels is caused by the nest parasitism of cowbirds, which are an invasive species to the area. Cowbirds will sneak their eggs into the gnatcatcher nests. These eggs will hatch first and the larger chicks hog the food, which decreases the gnatcatcher chick's chance of survival. One bird species you are likely to encounter in Orange County is the turkey vulture. The turkey vulture is a large, dark bird with long wings. Their name comes from their distinct red head. You can often see them soaring far above the ground. As they soar, they hold their wings slightly raised, making a V shape. They are unsteady flyers, so they have a noticeable teetering movement in flight. Turkey vultures play a critical role in Orange County's natural ecosystems as they eat carrion or dead animals. This helps control the spread of disease, which reduces health risks to humans and other animals. Their featherless red head helps to prevent them from contracting disease that they would otherwise pick up from the carrion they eat. These birds also have an amazing sense of smell that helps them detect their food from a mile away. The chaparral and coastal sage scrub are also home to a wide variety of reptiles. 
One such species is the California king snake. This snake can vary in appearance, but is most commonly identified by its alternating bands of black or brown and white or light yellow. The California king snake is not venomous and instead relies on constriction to kill its prey. These snakes eat many organisms, including rodents, small animals, lizards, and birds. California king snakes are actually immune to some snake venom, including rattlesnake venom. This is where the king in their name comes from, as it will eat many other snakes, including venomous rattlesnakes. Coyotes are the most commonly seen canid species in Orange County. They look similar to a lean German shepherd with a long snout and bushy black-tipped tail. Coyotes can be active in the day and night, but are nocturnal predators. They are carnivorous, but primarily eat small mammals like squirrels and mice. It is unlikely for coyotes to form packs, so they are usually seen individually, in pairs, or in small family groups. One of the wildcats that can be found in the chaparral habitats is the bobcat. It is slightly larger than a domesticated house cat and has a stockier build with a distinct bobbed tail and tufted ears. It is much smaller than another wildcat found in the chaparral habitat, the mountain lion. Bobcats are mainly carnivorous and feed on many small mammals, birds, and reptiles. The bobcat will stalk and ambush its prey. Bobcats are solitary animals that will only associate with other bobcats for very short periods of time. They are nocturnal, so it is very uncommon to see them during the daytime. However, bobcat encounters during the daytime are still possible, so it is important to know what to do in the event that you encounter one. If you see a bobcat, mountain lion, or coyote, do not approach it. Do not turn your back to the animal or run away, as you would appear as prey that is fleeing. Instead, slowly back away from the animal, make yourself bigger, and be loud. Let's test what you learned about the different animal species found in the coastal sage grub and chaparral. What is not one of the adaptations that the turkey vulture has developed? Is it A, they have a featherless head that prevents them from catching disease as they eat carrion, B, they have a strong sense of smell that helps them locate their food, or C, they flap their wings rapidly in flight? That was tough. The answer is C. They do not flap their wings rapidly in flight. Instead, they use the wind to help them soar and conserve energy. The coastal sage scrub and chaparral have been drastically reduced in abundance and face many threats that continue to impact the overall ecosystem and the species found within it. One of the major threats to these habitats is human development. As more land is built on, the range of these rare ecosystems are drastically reduced. While wildfire is a part of the natural life cycle of the California chaparral and coastal sage scrub, the increased frequency of wildfire could lead to permanent loss of this habitat. As wildfire events increase, native plants found in these habitats will not be able to survive and reappear, instead being replaced by invasive species and grasses. As invasive species take over, the coastal sage scrub and chaparral will be replaced with non-native grasslands, these very rare ecosystems will be lost, and with it, many plant and animal species would be lost in the process. Thanks for joining OC Habitats and learning more about the coastal sage scrub and chaparral habitats of Orange County, California. Be curious when you explore nature, but also be safe and aware of your surroundings. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for more information on what OC Habitats is doing and how to get involved. To learn more about the habitats in Orange County, visit our website at www.ochabitats.org.